the overarching theme of my research is anthropogenesis. It is how people make the world. But they're never alone making the world. They're in the world with all these other animals and plants and fungi. Fungi are very important. So you're in there making the world, and the idea that you're, you're not in the world, that you would preserve the world by being not a part of it, the environment by not being a part of it, to me is, is the problem. So all the research that comes from that is all of the, the goods and bads that come out of people's production of nature. People are always co-producing nature. So I'll give you an example of that. In South India, where we're just going to start our work in, in Karnataka, you can see dozens, dozens of endangered and threatened species, particularly bird species, but also mammal species. And they live, where do they live? They're not living in a conservation area. Where are these animals? They're living in coffee plantations. They're living in rubber plantations. They're living in tea plantations. They're living where people work. And there are lots of them. And are people saving these animals because they want to? No, they're saving these animals because there's something about the crop pricing and the productivity which configures the coffee plantation with a particular mix of trees. So how do you save dozens or hundreds of species in India? You can throw everybody out of the land and build a big fortress, or you can take a look at the price of coffee. And it is the price of coffee which will determine how many species you have. Control the center of the supply chain is our hypothesis, right? If you can at least buffer people from, and coffee goes up and down, these prices go up and down. So if it goes really down, people could clear out all that forest and you'd have lost, incidentally lost hundreds of birds which is a, just would be a crisis. How many animals can plantations produce and how can we help producers stay on the land? So how do you get both birds and like pe uh, people together to, to thrive in an anthropogenic environment, human made? Um, and there's an ethic that underlies that. My ethic is simple, everybody eats. The birds eat, the farmers eat, you get your coffee. So we've got another project which is on uh, which is on mosquitoes, which is the reverse of that same problem, that anthropogenesis produces hazards, not just benefits. So the city, which is a great place to live, I love cities, right? They're wonderful. Cities are wonderful environments, but they're built perfectly for mosquitoes. Mosquitoes evolved with people. There would be so many fewer mosquitoes if there weren't cities and people. Now, it's not just people. They like birds. Um, they live on birds and other animals, and mosquitoes are not wholly a human problem, but they do like cities. So how do we understand the city? How do we map the city? How do we use LIDAR in the city? How do we use different kinds of technologies to see the city the way the bug sees the city? Or they don't actually see, they transduce. They have sensors that filter carbon dioxide and various kinds of things that they're attracted to. So how do you remap the city from the point of view of bugs so that you can think about building the city differently or living in the city differently so that you're not exposed to hazards which deal very serious diseases especially for people who work outside, and the global poor, malaria, dengue. And this is visited upon millions of people around the world. And, they are, and er, cities produce this effect. Aedes aegypti is a particularly urban bug, and that's the vectoring mosquito for this disease. So how do you solve a problem for that? You need to know something about the urban built environment. You can't just know about mosquitoes. You've got to know, like, how do houses and swimming pools get abandoned? You have to know you need an urban geographer. Then you need, you know, somebody who knows about mosquitoes. So you need a medical entomologist. And you need to know somebody about, some, somebody who understands something about a disease. So that research, again, is interdisciplinary by its nature, but it's also about anthropogenesis.